I am Reynolda Jones, a mental health therapist who thinks outside the box. I'm connecting with passionate individuals using their talents to help the community. I call them visionaries and trailblazers. Join me as I connect with them today. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. If you are new to my channel or social media, um, I am Renelda Jones. I want to say thank you and welcome in for those who have been following me for some time. I appreciate you continuing to do so. So today I am with Dr. J. Dr. J, thank you for coming. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you. So before we um, talk a little more with Dr. J, one of the things that I've been doing is talking to different types of practitioners or community people in the community who I feel are trailblazers or just have some unique approach to how they are serving their community. And I thought Dr. J was one of those people. So oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to live up to this, this big thing. <laughs> but you, I are, you are, you are. And some of those people who have watched our lives with holistically speaking may have already met you. Um, but this time it, it doesn't really <laughs> anything about me. I'm just focusing on what other people are doing at their practice or um, other services that they're providing. So yes. just a little bit about Dr. Catherine. Let me go over, read my notes. Dr. Catherine Jackson or Dr. J is a licensed clinical psychologist and a board certified neurotherapist. Neurotherapist a sought-after international speaker and media expert who's been featured in Forbes, Oprah Magazine, CNN, and many other social media outlets. She specializes in improving well-being by increasing brain functioning and subsequently overall wellness. So again, thank you so much for coming to talk to us about these services that you provide. Yeah, again, thank you for even having me. This is it's always nice to talk about what you do. <laughs> so, you know, we can all geek out on even if it bores the crap out of other people. We can all geek out. <laughs> right. So I've been checking out your website. I, everybody that I've interviewed, I'm looking at their website. I'm I'm picking things that like really stand out to me. And so um neurotherapists, like tell us a little bit of what is that? So it's uh, work that is done strictly to um, rewire the brain. Um, a lot of it works with, focuses on the executive functioning or the frontal lobe uh, functioning for people who have ADHD. Mm. Or um, other services will, will target a gamut of different diagnoses, but it works by rewiring your brain waves, which is surface activity on, on the brain. And so it's lots of computerized work. It's not like traditional talk therapy, even though um, myself and then some of my colleagues that I learned with and work with, um, we will we will also do some talk components with the different types of neural therapies. So um, because, you know, we're trained psychologists, so we're we kind of combine the two worlds. OK, how did you even get into this field? Now, that's a hilarious story. Um, <laughs> So when I was an intern uh, finishing up the last of my doctoral degree, I was interning at uh, a private practice and uh, there were four of us, right? Four of us ladies all in, in, you know, completing our studies. And I think two or three of us actually went to the same school uh, and the other lady went to, a, to another school. Um, and so when you graduate, you have to do something kind of like uh, medical doctors have to do a residency. We then have to do a fellowship, a doctoral fellowship. It's like one more year of low pay <laughs> work, basically, <laughs> before you get licensed to, wow. as if they haven't already uh, done enough. <laughs> they get one more year out of you. And so, so at this particular practice, when you finish your, uh, or when you're doing your, you know, you finish your internship, you start your um, postdoctoral studies, you do you do a track. So it's not just like general, everybody's learning the same thing. One person goes here and one person goes there. One lady went and did testing and she still does it to this day. We're the only two from my cohort still there. Um, and then another lady was slated for neuro. Mm. 
Mm. She was going to do neuro, but she left for a higher paying um, postdoctoral position, basically a position that paid her like she was already done, <laughs> but she could finish her postdoctoral um, fellowship. Oh, okay. And when she left, she said, well, I'm leaving and I'm about to tell them now. And then, as soon as I finish, you should say you're interested in neuro. And that's how I got in it. I don't even know what I was slated for <laughs> prior to that. <laughs> I cannot remember <laughs> anything. <laughs> but I know everybody, you know, took a certain track. And I had learned about neuro during my um, my doctoral studies and even prior. And I always loved it. But then I was full concentrated in it um, at that point. And, and everything that I did became neural, 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 neural sense. Oh, okay. okay. So you have your own practice, though. Mm -hmm. So how did how did that come about? I mean, it sounds like you're doing things that you love. Yes, I am. And so I started my own practice because as much as I love the work that I do at this, you know, at the practice where I, I learned everything and um, I and people didn't look like me. Uh, most of the people that I work with didn't look like me every so often. And I could count on one hand how many people I work with that look like me. And so I know how important it is. I And then it's fancy work too, right? Um, that I, if I go to places where I like I grew up, people don't know nothing about a neurotherapy, <laughs> not something they've ever heard of. And so uh, part of what I do in my practice is I go into communities and talk about all the different types of services that are available. It's not just sitting down and just talking. And, and that doesn't always work for everybody either. Mm -hmm. Some people need a different kind of uh, therapy, which you know, because you're doing really unique work yourself. Yeah. Um, looking at looking at and treating people in a whole other way that wasn't the way that you learned in school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they don't teach mm -hmm. this. Um, and so I wanted to work with more people of color and I wanted people to be able to get like a really good quality service without having to pay so much for it. So that was why I started my practice. Nice. So, um, okay. So the field that you're in, did you know anybody that was in that field growing up? No. 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 <laughs> okay. No. And in fact, um, because most of the people I knew looked like this, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, growing up. And so even when I go to different neural conferences, I am, I'm the only one that looks like me at the conference. Yeah. I want other people to learn this modality. Too. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're absolutely an inspiration for many people. I'm sure that when you go to these sites and you talk with them and present that, you know, you're opening their minds up to other goals that they didn't even know they needed yes. exposure to. People don't know because they're not, they, they don't, they're not exposed to it. We have to kind of be, um, exposed to things to know there's another way. Cause I know, I don't know how it is, but most of the time it was just medication, medication, medication. Mm -hmm. And people didn't even think much even about talk therapy. And so there's so many other things. I'm not against medication. I know really good psychiatrists send people to when that is truly um, the need, but there are lots of parents and lots of uh, adult patients who want to try other routes um, like the nutrition um, and the and you know like all the stuff like that you do and and what we what we met on right mm -hmm. and then um, the same thing with with brain work is another alternative. Now some people will do the different neural therapies and they will still need some medication and it'll help with you know both things will work together. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people can just get like some of the neural therapies and they may not need medication at all so it really depends yeah okay it's so you gotta expose people to these things though <laughs> yeah yeah so people don't generally think of mental health and in, including whole body health so how did you get into that I feel like I've always been into it mm -hmm. <laughs> and the more and more I stayed and worked in the field I just became more legit with it so um, I was always looking at nutrition with my patients. Um, I would only go so far with certain things back then. But then once I got certified in integrative medicine, then I go even further and I go even deeper because it was legit, like real, you know, like official because I had this. <laughs> <laughs> but I have always and I grew up that way, like um, even growing up, my my parent, like I, I talk about in our book, right, the uh, <laughs> mood boosting foods about my 
Uh, mom was the, like the healthier one. So I got exposed to all of that. And then my dad was the more indulgent one. So I learned a lot of like balance like uh, that way. And I noticed when I was younger, how I felt we always want the junk food, but then we don't want the side effects of all that yeah. junk food. Right. Uh, <laughs> and I, I just didn't feel good. So I learned really early that eating eating the beneficial foods were really, it was just really good for me. And, and my body um, naturally would crave it most of the time. But I would always, it just always pops in your head like to some potato chips or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they taste good. They, they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> okay, so um, you also have a coaching business, is that correct? I do, yes. Okay, what do you, what do, you do there? Coach, um, <laughs> but... I, some people don't need the hard mental, like mental health. Maybe they have um, some difficulties with adjusting to a, a couple of things, or uh, again, back to the nutrition. Some people want to focus strictly on brain-based work, or they want to focus strictly on um, some holistic work. And so I'll do some coaching on that. It's more short term, teach people some skills, walk them through some uh, different uh, things. And then, you know, we don't we don't have to go. It doesn't go as long um, often as uh, therapy can go. Um, I want to pause real quick. So if you are new or you're watching, make sure to comment, ask questions, like, share, you know, get the word out that Dr. J is here and she's available to do presentations. It sounds like she got a lot of good information. So Dr. J, if you could identify um, the type of people that tend to contact you, who would they be? What are the characteristics? Black women who are tired. <laughs> tired, okay. Who are putting everybody first and um, and they, they're they ready to start to focus a little bit more on, on themselves and their, their wellness. So that's what I get the most. I do get some uh, Black men and some kids um, as well, but pretty much black women they're just they're sick of the same old same and they're ready to make a change when we say tired okay i i know how to interpret that but like the play person out there are we talking about like energy level tired are we talking about energy tired, level tired um mentally drained um tired of of doing so much for everybody and then there's either nothing or very little left for themselves, like time to focus on themselves. And they find that they have not fueled their own dreams or maybe they're doing so much. And then, you know, I know I've been in, in this position, I won't speak for you, uh, <laughs> but that you're doing so much for everybody, everybody else. And you find yourself getting agitated because you, you just don't have enough left for you. Um, mm -hmm. Those kind of women, and now they want to set more boundaries around some things and be able to put themselves first, fill, fill up themselves, and then give uh, to other people, like giving from their overflow instead of like just the little bit that might be left in their cup. Mm -hmm. Do you do in-person only or virtual? What do you provide? I do a combination of both, uh, virtual and um and in person. So uh, the neural work that I do has to be in person. <laughs> it cannot be done at home. Mm. And so that's, that's what I go in the office for. Um, but for coaching and for just typical types of therapy, I do that virtually. Are you private paid? Does insurance cover this? Both. <laughs> I have both. So in the office, um, when I, for, for neural work, most people pay with insurance. It's so many uh, sessions that are involved in that. Most people wouldn't want to pay out of uh, pocket. But then my uh, virtual sessions, uh, most of my virtual sessions are um, private pay, even though um, in some instances I can chart, I can bill, I'm sorry, bill through people's insurance. Okay. How do people find you? What's the way for them to connect with you? Uh, the best way to connect is through my website, which um, it has two names, but I'm going to give people the easiest one because they point to the same place. Okay. And it's just my name, Dr. Dr. Catherine Jackson .com. So okay. all in one thing. Do you have any events or any um, products that you want to make sure you share before we part? I, so I'm winding down for events for the year, yeah, shutting it down earlier than most years <laughs> so that I can do what I what I say to a lot of the women that I work with, I want to start to, to you know, pay some attention to, to myself, slow down, yeah. uh, re rest and refuel for myself and be strong. Right. And then I have, 
books, one with you, Ronelda. Yeah. <laughs> show um, me some of your material. Some of it's behind you, right? Yeah, right. make sure you show it. Come on. Turn it a little. So this is my <laughs> uh, very first book, <laughs> which is The Couch Experience. Oh, I have so much light in here. <laughs> the Couch Experience, A Guide to Good Therapy. And this will tell you about therapy from A to Z um, on um, how to get therapy. So where to where to start, um, questions to ask so that you can vet your therapist. They will ask you a million questions, but don't just let them ask you a lot of questions. Ask them questions too, to make sure that it's a fit from your end as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the way to termination. So everything in between and all the way to terminating. And so many people, I don't know about you, but now so many people terminate by just not calling or showing up anymore <laughs> right there are better ways to end therapy on a good note and if you ever need to go back to therapy <laughs> then you can you can always yeah. go back you you're probably not going to even be in the same place when you do that um but you can always go back so is that so book near the end <laughs> is that book primarily for people who are thinking about going to therapy or are they already in therapy you can use it if you're in therapy as well. At the very at the back um, in the appendix section, there are forms that you can use that will help you to reflect on each um, session that you have with your therapist. And so that helps you to stay on track with your goals for therapy. And then this is when you're not in therapy forever and ever because <laughs> you're staying really focused on what you're mm -hmm. what you're going in for and you're more likely to um to talk about the, the things that you should be talking about instead of wasting time. Yeah. So. I think it's good that you have questions for them to interview the therapist. I I always ask clients like, do you have questions? Anything you want to ask me? Sometimes they're like, no, I don't I think so. Know. But yeah. I'm open to it. You know, yes. it's not too personal. We can talk. <laughs> yes. And, and I have questions in there because I don't, I do believe that people don't know what to say. And then if you're like me and I'm, I know you, I know you're like, you're like me, your intake is very thorough. Your consultation before you even schedule the intake is probably very thorough too, to, to let you know if you're going to go uh, any further. But uh, us as the as the consumers, we don't know what to what to ask, and there are yeah. things you really want to ask, like things like, um, how how much have you worked with this particular issue? Whatever your particular issue is, if somebody's brand new, mm, and your issue is maybe a little bit more in depth, yeah. you may want to pass that person up. Is nothing wrong with that person, but it just may take a little bit longer. Or you might find yourself being frustrated with somebody who may not be seasoned with your mm -hmm. particular. Um, issue. And this is not against newbies um, because if somebody is new and they are being supervised, you get two, two therapists for one because their supervisor is on your working on your case and then that person is working on your case. So you're getting like a lot of extra attention for that. So if there are benefits and people just have to make their um, decisions. If you, but yeah. I, I think it could be a good option because one is cheaper when you're working with people who are still in tra uh, training, you can often get a lower rate and they're going to be talking to their seasoned <laughs> supervisor yeah. about all the aspects of the case and getting, um, it's kind of like getting support and help along the way. Yeah. And depending on this, depending on the state, at least in my field, because I'm in social work, uh, a person supervised for like multiple years. So they may have been in the field for several years, but they're still, supervised and consider a newbie until they're officially <laughs> licensed so and they just extended the amount of hours here in Michigan so it used to be 3,000 now it's 4,000 so that means you had to be supervised for you know for three years or yes yeah. and just trying to explain so the regular like Joe person doesn't know this kind of stuff though right no so I don't. tried to demystify a lot of it in the book and I think it's good that you touch on termination too because a lot of people get ghosted like yes. <laughs> some people have a hard time with goodbyes but That's it's true to have the official goodbye it to me they're nice because you can talk about where you were at the beginning and come all the way to where you are now. And it's kind of nice to be reminded of different tools and things you've yeah. learned. Yeah. 
And that's, I agree with that because when I do termination sessions, I ask my clients what growth they've seen. And then I talk with them what I've seen since the yeah. first time that we've met, you know, like for some people who came in really anxious, maybe now they can have a complete sentence where their thoughts aren't scattered. And I can see that progress and I can yeah. let them know, like, this is stuff that I, that I've seen in you. Uh, you're speaking up for yourself. I see that. And, you know, having that reinsurance is very you know, I think it's beneficial sometimes for clients. And you don't get that type of feedback if you never come back. If you just go, right. <laughs> you, just, you just can go whatever you can remember. <laughs> there will be no connections made. <laughs> so don't ghost. <laughs> if you go no, don't pay. ghost, you know. <laughs> Leave on a good note for yourself anyway. So any other products that you want to make sure you touch? I have, I'm just going to show you one, but I have like um, five to six different card decks. Okay. Um, this is the, the sampler edition. And so there's all different kinds of things. You can use them for journaling. You can use them between sessions or with your therapist um, in sessions. Some of them are action based. Some of them are question based for, for thought. Um, some of them will give you good information about different things. Um, so all different types of stuff. The couch experience. experience. Couch experience <laughs> therapy card. <laughs> so it goes along with the whole book experience, but right, you right can, here. Yeah. <laughs> Your lighting is so much better. You <laughs> okay. Well, is there anything that you want to make sure we touch base on before we end our our video today, our live? <laughs> this is my plea to the people who are listening is if you need um, help and it's beyond just what you can deal with on your own, there is no shame, no shame and get reaching out to a therapist for support. And that's whether it's you or a loved one um, that's close for you. Um, so just try to connect with somebody who will work for you or your loved one. And trust me, you will be it, it can be nerve wracking in the beginning, but you'll be so much better for that experience in the end, especially if you find the person that's the right fit and that's the right fit. Yeah, absolutely. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. All right, everyone, if you have sat here and listened to me and Dr. J, make sure that you put in the comments the things that were helpful to you. If you have questions, um, put them down in the comments below and I'll make sure she get to them if we have to do another live just so she can answer them. I'll do that too. And like and share. Now she's in Illinois, Chicago, correct? So if you are in that area and you feel like what she said really resonated with you, Make sure that you go to her website and so you can connect with her in some way, whether it's a presentation, workshop, or even become a client. And there you have it. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming.